Hi, I'm Adam Stevenson, and welcome to the Dev Superpowers Show. In this episode, I'll be talking today about building cross-platform applications with Xamarin Forms. If you're looking for the easiest way to build native iOS, Android, and Windows Phone applications, this is the session for you. What we're going to cover is we're going to have a bit of a chat about what Xamarin Forms are. We're going to do a, an introduction to working with Xamarin Forms, and then we're going to put a simple app together. We're just going to do a login screen that then takes us in and displays a list of people, and then lets us drill down and see a bit of detail about each of those people. So, what exactly is Xamarin Forms? For a while, there's been a number of options for building applications that'll run across uh, mobile devices. You know, we've been able to build responsive websites that you know that scale themselves to look good on on smaller form factors. Um, but most of the time, people would rather an app that's actually running on their application that, rather than working in a browser on their device. Um, we've also got the ability to create hybrid applications, and these are the ones that are built using HTML, JavaScript, and Cordova. So the problem with these is the user doesn't get as great an experience as they do um, on a native uh, application, and we usually find that they look quite different. Uh, they they don't you can tell by just by looking at them that they're not native. So. Now there are there, we have been able to build cross-platform applications before with Xamarin Mobile, and this has been we've been able to do this for a number of years, and that gets us about seventy percent code reuse. So we can build our application in C Sharp with the business logic and all of our data access, and then what we need to do then using um, Xamarin Mobile was to go out and actually build an iOS um, front end and an Android front end. Now. What Xamarin, so these are native applications that don't have the limitations of other toolkits like browser sandboxes and limited APIs, but the barrier to entry was that C-sharp developers had to go and learn Objective-C for um, iOS development, and they had to go and write the Android user interface in Java. So Xamarin Forms is the, the new offering from Xamarin, and what's great about it is it lets us write the middle tier and the data access and the user interface all in C-sharp. If we want to, we can build the whole application in Visual Studio. That's the, and, that's, and that's including the user interfaces for iOS, Android and Windows Phone. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into, so you can do this using Xamarin Studio, but I'm going to jump in, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to kick that off. Okay, so I'm actually, I'm going to see, you'll see I'm actually running, so we can build our applications in Visual Studio, but I'm actually going to be using Xamarin Studio, fully building it on Mac. So if you are going to build iOS applications, even if you're using Visual Studio, you either need to be working on a Mac or have a Mac handy to use to be able to actually build the solution. Um, one of the best things about working with Xamarin Forms is that because we're building, we're building the user interfaces just using C Sharp or optionally XAML. And then Xamarin Forms renders the user interfaces using the native controls of the target platform. Um, this, is a, this, this allows the Xamarin Forms application to, to retain the really authentic look and feel for each platform. And then if we need to, we can actually then go and add um, controls from or build some native, use the native UI toolkit if there are parts that we need from those uh, individual platforms. What I'm going to do is in Xamarin Studio, I'm going to jump up to the file menu and I'm going to create a new solution. And I'm going to call it um, Northwind Xamarin. And there's a couple of different options in here. I'm going to go into mobile apps and there's a couple of different options. I can either see there's options for portable and there's an option for a blank app using shared libraries. Now, the difference between the portable class libraries and the shared projects 
is that portable class libraries are compiled down into a single assembly where shared projects work on compiler directives. Um, this can make it harder to get compile time errors and write unit tests across all of the code in the shared projects. So we're always going to choose portable class library projects. So I'm going to hit OK. Now what we can see is, is we've got a solution here and we've actually got three projects in the solution. Okay, we've got the portable library. Now this contains all of the shared code and shared UI that we'll use across all of the platforms. We've also got an Android um, project. This is going to contain the Android specific UI and the entry point for Android applications. And we've got the same thing for iOS. So this is the where we put all of our iOS specific code. If I was in Visual Studio, you'd see that there'd be another project there for Windows Phone. Now, I'm going to kick the, uh, I'm going to set the Android project as the startup project. And I am actually just going to kick that one off. So I'm going to say run with, oops. Uh, my mouse ran away a little there. So I'm going to set that as the startup project. I'm going to say run with and I'm going to choose what emulator. So this is going to kick off the default project with my Nexus 10 simulator. Okay, I've kicked that off because the, the, uh, the Android simulator can take a little while to kick off. So while that's opening up, I'm actually going to open up the project that I just started. And what we can see is we can see in the main activity class inside, so we're in the Android app, uh, the Android project, I can jump into the main activity class, okay? We can see um, that it's an activity, and we can see that in the onCreate method, we're initializing Xamarin forms, and then we're calling the getMainPage method from this app class. Now, what this is doing is this is going up to our shared project, and it's getting the, um, it's get, calling getMainPage from here. So this is, getting the first page from our shared project. Now, if I jump into the iOS application and I have a look at the app delegate, you'll see that it's doing a very similar thing. It's initializing Xamarin Forms and then it's calling get main page and setting it in iOS to be the root view controller. Okay, let's see if that emulator has kicked off. Okay, I've signed in. I can see up the top here, it's still starting the Nexus 10. So you'll see, we'll actually use, for most of the tutorial, we'll actually use the iOS emulator because it's a lot snappier and we get much faster feedback than working with the, the Android emulator. But we'll give it a chance to, uh, to get going. Now, most of the work we're going to do is going to be up here in the, 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 uh, the shared library. up again. I'm still starting. Okay, so what's happening up here in the shared library is we can see we've got a, uh, inside the app, we've got a page object. Okay, in uh, Xamarin Forms, there's a concept of pages and pages really represent a screen. Now there are different types of pages, so we can have master detail pages for example. Um, and now within the page, we can put layouts and we can put controls. Okay, so I'm, the get main path, the get main page method is returning a page, and it's just returning a page that just contains a single label. Okay, we can see this is still starting. Okay, excellent. Now that it's started, it'll be it'll be deploying. I'll let it keep going along a little while. Um, so what we're going what we're going to do is we can take this. It'll be nice if uh, this one deployed before I had to start changing the code. This is a. Uh, a really good example of uh, why we prefer the iOS um, the iOS emulator to the Android emulator. 
I might actually stop that and uh, I'll do that. I'll try that again a little bit later. So I'm going to jump across. I'm going to do this in the iOS emulator. So I'm going to set that as a startup project. I mean, I've got my iPhone 4 set as my emulator and you'll see that this is a very different experience. Okay, so it's compiling it, it's kicked off the emulator and it's deployed Hello Forms across to the emulator. Okay, now I want to make, I want to do a little bit better than that. So I want to do a little, put a little more in than just Hello Forms. So what can I do? I'm actually going to go and I'm going to create, rather than just putting everything here, I'm going to go and create a page in my Xamarin uh, shared project. So I'm just going to right click and choose add and choose new file. Um, I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it my login page. Okay. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say that my login page is a content page. Okay. Um, now in my login page, in the constructor, I'm going to declare a label. Label one is new label. Okay. Now I'm working in C sharp. So I, as I said, we can either declare, we can either build our user interfaces in C sharp or in XAML. So for the, for the sake of simplicity in this demo, I'm going to stick with C sharp. Now I'm just going to set some properties on my label. I'm going to say hello iOS and I'm going to set the background color to, to color.green. Okay, I'm going to, now we can't actually set the width or the height, but what we can do is we can make a request um, and it will, depending on the layout uh, and the room available, it will do its best to set those properties. Oh, okay. That's going to be because I haven't. So it's saying content page when I tried to build it could not be found. That's because I'm missing my Xamarin Forms using. Okay, that looks a bit better. Now I'm going to just create a second label. Hello Android. Actually what I could have done is just copied this down would have been more efficient. Okay, and I'll make that one red. Okay, so I've created two labels. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new layout and I'm going to say my layout is an absolute layout. Okay, now an absolute layout lets us do positioning similar to how we do positioning in uh, Windows Forms applications. Children.add, so I'm creating the, I've created the layout now I'm going to add, the, add those layouts and I'm going to specify the exact place on the layout where they should appear. So label one, I'm going to put at 2020. Um, oops. And label two, I'm going to put it position 100, 100. Okay, I'm just going to put a bit of padding on. And then I'm going to set the content property equal. So this is the, the content property of the page I'm setting to the light to be the layout that I've actually just created. Okay, so now that should build. Oh. Uh, what have I done wrong? Is a new absolute layout. How's that look? That looks pretty good. Okay, so I've come in and I've created a login page. So now what I'm going to go, I'm going to jump back onto my app. And now instead of returning this page that just returns, that, uh, that uh, just specified the, um, the label, 
Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return new plugin page. And let's have a look at how that looks. Okay, it's just saying that the uh, application is already running. So I'm going to stop it and this will redeploy it. I'm, once again, of course, I'm using iOS. Cool. So now what I've done is I've got those two labels. Let me jump back into the page. Um, I've got the two labels. I specified a request for their width and height. I set their background colors. Um, and then I positioned them absolutely at 2020 and 100, 100. Now, as you can see, so the order that I actually specify them in is important. Um, and it works the same as uh, Z index when you're doing web development. So if I um, cut that and put it up here. So now I'm doing label two first. So the positions, the moving, uh, adding label two above label one won't do anything to do, change their positions, but you can see how it's affected the Z index. So now hello iOS is on top of hello Android. Okay. Um, yeah, so what I can do now, so that was using absolute positioning. So what I can do is instead of using uh, absolute positioning, what I might want to do is use a stack layout. Now this is going to work more like how we work in the web. And I'm going to say, give me a new, I'm going to change this to use a stack layout. Don't need to do that anymore. And what I'll do is in my stack layout, I am going to give it a bit of spacing, look good. And I'm just going to set the children property. Um, and on the, for the children property, I'm just going to add the two labels, label one and label two. Okay, so this is going to work uh, similar to how divs work when we're working in the web. So let's say how our layout's looking now. So I'm still adding two labels. But instead of doing an absolute layout and positioning them individually, I've said, give me a stack layout. So it's treating them like divs, it's putting them in, and it's uh, uh, it's using that height request, and it's you can see it's currently ignoring the, uh, the width request. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I can make some changes here. And in my stack layout, instead, what I might do is after the spacing, um, I can change the orientation. So painting, oops. And I can say my orientation is a stack orientation. Um, and we'll say horizontal. And for the vertical options, I'm going to say layout options dot end. And for the horizontal, I don't know, for horizontal options, I'm going to say layout options dot start. Okay, so what I've done now is I've said position this vertically at the end. So what it's going to do is it's going to position everything at the bottom. Horizontally, it's going to position at the start, um, which is towards the left. And in orientation, instead of the default, which is to add my um, add my labels in vertically, instead it's going to add them in horizontally. So let's uh, have another look and see how that looks. Here we go. Excellent. So now you can see we're still using a stack layout, but we're um, adding the items in horizontally um, and positioning at them towards the left and at the bottom. Now, so that gives you a bit of an idea about, um, you know, all we're really do about doing some layouts and using labels. But what we'll be doing most of the time, so what Xamarin Forms is really good at, is doing, you know, forms over data, collecting information across and providing a user interface for that across mobile, you know, different mobile platforms. So what we want to do is we want to start doing some kind of data collection. And after all, we did say this was going to be a login page. So on our login page, what would we normally have? We would usually have a um, some fields. So in Xamarin Forms, we call them uh, entry fields. 
So I'm going to create a username field, okay? And I'm going to create a uh, password field. And I am going to create a button, which we call buttons. I'm going to call it the login button. Okay, so I've declared my controls. Now when I start my login page, I'll set, let's set a title, and I'm going to call it uh, Mentor Login. So we'll make it for our Fire Bootcamp. Have I done padding? No, I'll do some padding. Okay, now I'm not going to put any labels on my um, login form, but what I am going to do is I'm going to add a logo. So I can just actually um, specify the source and I've got the Fire Bootcamp logo on Fire Bootcamp logo. So Fire Bootcamp is our uh, nine week intensive uh, .NET, Angular and uh, MVC training course. And I've used the wrong brackets here. So I'll jump back in and change those. Um, now I'm going to instantiate my field. So I'm going to say my username field is a new entry field. And I'm just going to specify a placeholder the same way I would on the web. And I'll say that's username. So uh, that gets us away from needing to use a lot of labels. It keeps our UI nice and clean. Password field is new entry. And we'll say that the placeholder for that one is password. And we're actually going to set is password equals true here so that as we're entering the data, no one can see it. Uh, and then the login button is the last one. And I'm going to say the login button is a new button. And I'll set the text on the login button to be just login. Okay, so now I've created my controls. I've got my layout. Uh, I probably don't need um, oh, vertical options. I might align it to this, those controls to the center. I definitely don't want that aligned um, horizontally. And horizontal options, I'll leave that out as well. Okay, cool. Um, so and I'll have to update these children. So we're going to say the children are, we'll put them in an order, the logo, then the username field. Uh, the username field and then the password field and then the login button. Does that look right? Nearly. That looks better. I know. Logo. Feeling, uh huh. There we go. I knew that something didn't look right there. Lovely. Okay, so while that's that's how that's building, we'll do a little bit of a tidy up. Okay, let's have a look. Hey, awesome. So that's pretty great. That looks, that's actually quite nice straight out of the box. So what I've done is I've taken my uh, Fire Bootcamp logo and I've put it on the, on, the, on the form. I've added in a placeholder for username. I've added in a placeholder for password. Um, and I've added a login button. Now I wonder if that Android emulator ever got around. Android. Um, I will try and kick this one while we're doing the next little bit of code. Um, I am going to try and kick off that Android emulator again and give it a little bit of time to get going. So I'm going to set that as the startup project. Going to run with my Nexus 10 emulator. Okay, cool. So we created the login form, and it looked quite nice, but uh, obviously it didn't actually it didn't actually do very much yet. So I could jump in here and um, 
you can see here I'm actually using the evaluation version of uh, uh, Xamarin on this laptop so that's why I'm getting those messages so you can see here it marries up quite quite well I added I created a logo and specified just the source URL so let's put that on the form uh, it's got uh, an entry field with a placeholder for username and one for password so that when I type in here you can see the keyboard comes up um, and I can come in here and when I type in my passwords in here oops, you can see they're coming up as dots Okay. now what I'm going to do now is I want to have an event on that login button so I'm going to jump in here and I'm going to say login button dot clicked and I'm going to say call the login method okay now I need to of course call the login method so I'm going to come down here and actually before I call the login method I'm just going to create a a method called authenticate and authenticate is going to take a username and a password and because we have a uh, very very tight security here if your name is Adam it will return true and you're authenticated so obviously this would usually go off and uh, talk to a, an external service but for the moment anyone whose name is Adam regardless of password can log in okay so now that I've got my mechanism to go and perform authentication I'm actually going to create my uh, asynchronous async um, void login method okay uh, it accepts as arguments uh, sender and some event args now um, what I'm going to do authenticated um, and I'll call my authenticate method method authenticate and I'm going to authenticate based on the username field text and the password field text okay so I'm getting the username field text and the password field text I'm passing them through to my authenticate method so usually that would go off and talk to uh, something like the web API or a database um, and then it's going to return a, uh, a value and now based on what it's returned I'm going to say if I am authenticated if I am authenticated um, display an alert login your a method saying you're logged in okay I'll give it an OK button and we don't need a cancel button okay so you'll notice that I'm using a lot of uh, the async await um, so it's great that uh, that asynchronous support is already in uh, is all throughout Xamarin so it's what have I missed async I've spelled async wrong a s y n c cool and now that should be great so let's have a little sneaky back to our Android emulator hmm I might have to do some investigation of why Northwind Android R Okay, so that was the other one that got deployed. So no, it hasn't actually, it's not actually deploying these. So um, we could wait and it will eventually deploy. Um, what, I'm, what I'll do, rather than uh, wait and slow down the demo, so the, it's when you're working, so this is a really, so it's a, a, a bit of a demo failure, but really it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's part of the lesson. The, uh, the Android emulators are very, very slow. So what you really want to be doing with Android is using a device or having a look into something like Motion. 
um, and we'll be having some Xamarin rules come up on our website. Uh, so we'll definitely be talking about the Android emulators. But um, you can see here, a, you know, obviously here are some uh, some apps that I generated uh, from this from my practice of this demo. Um, and you can see, I you saw the one before there with the two squares. You can see this the user interface looks a lot smaller. So there you can see the uh, the username and password for this application. Um, you can see the fields look a lot smaller. That's because this is actually for a Nexus 10. Um, so it's actually for a much larger device, but it's scaled down to fit on the screen. Okay, so you can see that, but what it has done automatically is it's taken and it's used the um, the Android controls. So we've got a real Android look uh, on our Android emulator. And because it's using all of the, the native Android controls, and we've got the the really true iOS um, look on the on the iOS device, uh, which is great. So the iOS emulator is great. It deploys and works really fast. So when I'm developing, I almost always so I, I constantly use the iOS emulator, and then you know every hour or so I'll check back in with the Android emulator to make sure that you know everything's working. Um, on Android as I'd expect it to do. But pretty much for getting rapid feedback, I'm constantly getting that from the, um, from the iOS um, emulator. Or, and the tip is for uh, if you're going to be using, uh, sorry, for, because you, you, you know, we highly recommend you would develop for Android, is uh, either use a device or come and have a look at something like Motion. Oh, it looks like what I did before is actually just about to kick off. So it's starting the Nexus 10 API, it's gone dark, so I'm hoping it's just going to now bring up uh, the application that we tried to, tried to deploy a few minutes ago. Uh, because I want to move on and start writing some more code. Let's see how that goes. Um, so I'll start talking about what we're going to do next. So what we've done is we've created a form. Oh, I haven't actually, I can demo that in, I think I deployed it. I haven't that deployed that version to iOS yet. Um, so I've made the change. So we took our form um, that had our fields on it. We added an authenticate method and we've said, take the user interface. So take the username field and the password field, hand them to my authenticate method. And when you get a value back, if it's authenticated, display an alert saying that the user is authenticated. Okay, I might have to give up on you. Yep. Okay, I'm going to leave uh, Android. And I'm going to run the run where we're up to in the iOS. Yep, that's how it should be. Nice and snappy. Fire it up. I type in my username. I hit the login button and I'm raising my dialog saying, hey, you're logged in. That's pretty cool. Okay, the next thing we want to do is start adding some details. So we want to do, after we log in, we don't want to just display a message. We actually want to do something. So let's go and create a new page. So I'm going to jump in. I'm going to add a new file. I'm going to create a person list page. Okay, in my person list page, I'm gonna say that's a content page. Uh, I'll add some padding. Okay, I did it again. Forgot, I forgot to add my using statement for Xamarin Forms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list view. Okay, and what a list view is going to let me do, it's a capital L, um, is actually take a list of objects and actually display them nicely down the page. Okay, so I'm going to say on my list view, I'm going to specify a row height of 40. Okay, and something here isn't quite right. Row 
row height, thickness. Let's see, what have I done wrong? Oh, I dropped the new keyword. That'll do it. Okay, so I've created a list view. Now, of course, I need to put something into the list view. So in a person list, I'm going to create a person class and have a list of people. So I'm going to have a property, I'm going to have a string property called name. And I'm going to have a string property called phone. Oh, I typed string wrong. I should probably could have called that out. This is so Xamarin Studio has uh, it's taken a lot of the cues from Visual Studio, so it has a lot of the shortcuts. Like I can hit prop and hit tab twice, and it's actually going to give me a template for a property. This and I, of course the CTOR works the same way for constructors. Um, so the actual editing experience in Xamarin Studio is actually quite nice. Um, it still does. It's still not the same as using Visual Studio with uh, something like ReSharper, but um, it's a it's a, not a bad experience at all. Okay, so now that I've got my my uh, person class, okay, I'm going to set the uh, list view item source. I always forget that S. Okay, I'm going to set it to an array of person. Okay, and into that array of person, I'm going to add a new person. Um, and I'm going to say name. I'll might say Adam Adams. And phone is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and now I'm going to copy that. Brad Bell. Okay, so now I've added my people. Now what I need to do, so I've uh, I created the person class, I've set some padding, I've created a new list view, I've added some items, so I've, I've created an array of persons and I've assigned that to the item source. Now the next thing my list view needs is I need to specify an item template, okay? I need to say, look, I've assigned an array of people to this list view, but what I actually need to do is I need to tell the list view what to display. So I'm gonna create a data template, and I'm going to say the data template is type of a text cell and list view dot item template. I'm going to set the binding so that the text cells text property is set to the name property of the of the person that's assigned to it. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're saying use a text cell and set the text cells text property, so the text of the cell to the name property of the person. Okay, so now all I need to do is set the content and I'm just going to make that a new stack layout and I'm going to put the vertical options equal to layout options. I'll fill that and I'm going to set the children property of the stack layout to be that list view. Excellent. Okay, so I've created a new page. And now, now really what I should do with person is I should come in here and I should create like a domain project. So we obviously we can have more projects in here than just the user interface space specific one. So really I should go and create a, uh, a domain project and actually move that class into the domain project. But because that's beyond the, the scope of what I'm trying to do, I'm actually just gonna to move along now. It would be nice to 
So I've created this person list page. Um, I've created the list view, I've assigned items to it, and I've set the template. Now, I need to be able to navigate somehow to that, uh, that person list page. So what I'm going to do to be able to do that, I'm going to jump back into my login page. And in my login page, I'm going to change this around a little bit. I'm going to say, if the user is not authenticated, display an alert. Login failed. Okay. Else, so if the login was successful, tidy this up a bit. Otherwise, if the login is successful, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and navigation, I'm going to push, and I'm going to go to a new person list page. Okay. Now, Xamarin Forms has a, uh, the way that Xamarin Forms works is it has a last, so it's a, a last in first out stack of page objects. So what we do is, is to move from one page to another page, we push a page onto the stack. And the page that's on the top of the stack is the page that's being displayed in the user interface. So what we're doing here is we're, we're creating a new, if the login is not authenticated, we're displaying an alert and saying, hey, that didn't work. But if it is authenticated, what we're doing is, is we're creating a new person list page and pushing that onto our stack of pages. And because we're pushing it onto the top of the stack, that's the page that gets displayed. Okay, so what I'm going to do though, I'm going to make one other little navigation change is I'm going to jump back in my app and I'm just going to wrap my new login page in a navigation panel. Navigation page. Okay, so what that's going to do, so the navigation page class um, will manage the stack of pages, okay? And um, it's also going to add a navigation bar to the top of the screen that displays the title, and when it's appropriate, it'll have, the, it'll have the back button on it. So now I've got navigation page. Now I should be able to run this and have a look. One. I'm going to set iOS as the startup project. Oh. Here it comes. Okay, so now I can see that the navigation page has been added. I've got the title up there. Now when I log in, what I'm going to expect to happen is I navigate to my mentor login page. So I'll just jump back in so you can compare how that looks. So my person list page. Okay, I can see my um, I can see my list view here. I can see the list of people. So I can see Anna Adams, Adam Adams and Brad Bell. Um, and I can see that uh, it's bound to that name property. So that's pretty cool. We're just going to do one more thing. What I'd like to do is when I click on one of these uh, mentors, I'd like it to open up a new page and show their details. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to, as I did before, I'm going to go in and add a new file, an empty class. I'm going to call it the um, the what will I do? I will call it the person page. Oops person page because I'll use it to display people. Okay, now I'm in my person page and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that I'm going to remember to use Xamarin.Forms this time. I'm going to come into my person page. I'm going to make it a content page. Okay, but this time my person page I'm actually going to require that when I instantiate a person page via the struct constructor, 
I'm actually going to say this requires a person to be passed to it. Okay, um, I'm going to put in some padding. Say 20. Okay, I'm going to say var layout is new stack layout. Spacing is 20. And for the children, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a couple of labels for the moment. I'll say new label text equals person.name. And new label. Oops, that one. Text equals person dot phone. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now I just say content equals the, that layout that I just created. Okay, great. So I've created a person page, and that person page just contains two labels, but those labels are set by passing in. A, uh, an object to them. Okay, pretty easy. Now, so now all I need to do is jump back onto my person list page and I'm going to say that uh, on my list view, when it's, uh, when an item is tapped, I'm going to call asynchronously um, an anonymous, I'm going to use an anonymous method and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to get the selected person, uh, which is I'm going to have to cast it as person e dot item the person. I'm going to get the page that I'm navigating to, so that's going to be a new person page. And I'm going to pass in the selected person. Okay, and now I just need to do my navigation. Dot push async person page. Okay, cool. So I'm getting the selected item from the event args, casting it as person, so that'll be my selected person. Then I'm creating a new instance of the person page and passing in the person that we tapped on and then navigating to that page by pushing it onto the top of the stack. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going to log in. And when I click on me, ah, excellent. It goes to Adam Adams. When I go back, Click on Brad Bell, navigates to Brad Bell. Excellent. So what we've done is we created our login form. We used, we explored some, um, we explored some, uh, we had some layouts, a couple of different layouts. We explored using fields. We handled some events and some navigation. Uh, and we used the list view. We covered what is Xamarin Form. So as a bit of a recap, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you saw that it's pretty easy to get going with Xamarin Forms. When you're doing a forms over data collection application, um, actually, before we leave, I'm just going to, no, didn't uh, end up going through. So what we saw was is we saw that we should definitely uh, investigate the other options for uh, for Android emulation. And the best way that I've found is just to, is to get an Android device. Um, but then we actually saw that if we did have the device plugged in, if you were able to see the device, um, you'd be able to see that the, the user interface that's rendered on Android um, is exactly the same as the, is functionally exactly the same as what's rendered on iOS, but it's rendered fully natively and it looks like an iOS, uh, it looks like an Android application and the iOS application looks like an iOS application and that's because they're both using their built-in controls and uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a really amazingly easy way to be able to build native applications 100% in C-sharp. Um, so Xamarin Forms is really suited to building enterprise applications. You don't need to understand the workings of Android or iOS or, or Windows Phone 8 
uh, it extracts all of the, or Windows Phone, I should say, that it's actually supporting the Silverlight version. Oh yeah, with Windows 8. Um, so thanks for joining me for the Xamarin Forms episode of Dev Superpowers. Um, we'll see you. We'll see you uh, next month, the same bat time, same bat channel for the episode you've been waiting for, Angular JS Dev Superpowers. Thank you.